My name is Thorsten Zuber, Head of Blockchain, and welcome to my session, Understanding Blockchain for Enterprise, Digital Trust, Real Business Value. Digital trust, what is trust about? Trust is about knowing someone. So if you know someone and you trust the person, you trust the information the person is sharing with you, right? If you know now someone you trust, I even might trust the information this person is sharing because you trust the person. If there's a person I don't know sharing information, would you trust that person? Probably not. Now what about if this person has information that you are interested in, that you need? What, what do you do? So you might ask your ecosystem and say, hey, guys, do you know this person? And if they say, that's a great person, then you would say, okay, I trust him. If they say, I don't know, you could do, okay, I ask everyone here. And if 51% says, this is a good person, you would say, happy to go. So it's about, what, what are we uh, seeing here? It's about trust because you know someone, or it's because trust, there is kind of proof points. There's a rating. There's even a certificate or something that proves that the information on hand are trustworthy and you can use them. And the enterprises spend a lot of effort in maintaining these relationships. Relationships on an enterprise organization level, on a personal level, but also on an ecosystem level. But this is getting more and more difficult as we are approaching into a digital world. It's not only about information that we share between persons that you share between systems. No, information and data is everywhere. Imagine what about you would be able to get all information that you need at any point immediately in real time. And you just trust the information. You do, do, you do not even ask anymore who has published information. Do I know the person? No, the, source, the, system, uh, the data, the information is in the system and you just trust that. How would that be? Information that your ecosystem is willing to share with you and it's just there. Wouldn't that be great? And this is exactly what blockchain promises. Blockchain as a technology helps us to share information across the company boundaries, allowing us to establish a digital truth where we can both or many multiple parties contribute read and write, sharing information. Processes like, oh, I need a confirmation. Um, I, I, I confirm that I, I got um, the delivery. Um, I have to prove something. This is all gone. All the information we share between the systems would not be necessary. If you would have an order, one data of record, and your customer says, yeah, I, I confirm. The delivery is sent over. You look at the goods to a program. You say, OK, I confirm 10 and you just update this record. If payment is done, you would just update the record again and say, I got the money. No need to reconcile anything. No need to send thousands of messages in between. So there is a huge opportunity when we take a technology such as blockchain on the one side, and on the other side, what we see here at the slide, the business processes we have today, and we bring this together, we might end up in something we call new network-based business models that fundamentally and radically simplify op and thus optimize processes and even might establish completely new ways how we do business. Now you might say, okay, Torsten, this is a little bit high level. I understand what you're talking about, you know, but I mean, really, this is my business. How can this help to me? So we have understood that we have to understand what a technology motivates, but then translate it into something valuable, into something tangible. And this is why we have introduced in the summer the first SAP Industry Blockchain Consortium in the area of high-tech. Just this week, we announced two more, in the, one in the area of retail consumer products and agribusiness, as well as in the area of life science and pharma. So what we are doing here is we're bringing companies to, together, companies that might have an idea, that might be just interested in blockchain and the technology, or they come to us and say, I have a real problem, look at that. Wouldn't it be great if I could have now access to this information which I do not possess at this moment? So we bring them together. Now, as we're talking about a multiple peer discussion, so there is no blockchain of one. What we need to do to understand what we, uh, what we have to implement, what we have to solve, we have to have this discussion with all participants within the network from the very beginning. And this is what we do here. We bring them together, we discuss, we understand the problem, we define the problem space. We define 
what would be a solution, and then, only then, we start to think about which is the right technology. Should we take fabric, multi-chain, quorum, ethereum, quarter, whatever it is? Only then, right? A few examples that came out of these discussions I would like to share to show you that this is real is um, one example from the area of life science and pharma is about product authenticity validation. At the end of the day, it's about when a wholesaler gets a medication bag. So for example, the pharmacy would wanted to order two, type or 20, says, okay, 18, I have to reject. So 18 boxes come back. Now they scan them. Now how can you be sure that this is the original product? Bottom line here, we used a blockchain to establish a pharma network. And the application, the scanning application, just checking the blockchain, that is the original one. Blockchain says, yes, fine. Can't go to the details here, uh, as I have only 20 minutes. Um, uh, if, uh, if you want to go more into the details, I mean, uh, go to our booth. This, we started exactly in the way I've uh, talked before. We got the customers together. We understood what the problem was. We did the first prototype to validate the business case. We did the second prototype to validate the technology. And we are now in the phase where we implement a productive pharma network to cover that one. Another nice example, and you might have heard about this, is farm to consumer. This is food. Imagine someone is getting sick from your food. That's a real issue. You now the manufacturer of the food is getting an alarm. What I, what I have to do now? What do you have to do? The first thing, even before you understand if there's a real issue, you have to alarm the entire system to ensure that no one else get poisoned by that. So what is the problem? The problem is that you have no transparency because you just know to whom you have sold, but you do not know where the product goes along the supply chain. So we implemented with that consortium a possibility using, the, uh, using blockchain that by pressing just one button, you get a graph and you immediately see where along the supply chain your product goes. You see that according to a batch, for example, that 10 pieces are still in that supermarket, 20 in that, and 30 in that supermarket. You don't see which supermarket it is because it, it's not relevant. You just see there are the supermarkets. What you say is you press the button and say, this is on current time. Immediately, everyone gets an alert. They look at that and say, okay, I acknowledge that. So now, I as a manufacturer immediately see that 25%, 30%, 50%, they are aware of that. So then I also ask them to take action, means take it off shelf. Not, not destroy it yet, we are not sure, but take it off shelf. So they confirm this. And then I have time because I go in the other way down until the raw material and under, do a root cause analysis and try to understand, do I really have an issue? In the meantime, it can turn out, no, the guy just ate something else, I'm off the hook. I just re take the recall back. Immediately, I send this information along the network. I do not even know to whom. But everyone knows now, whew, great, so I can put my stuff back to the shelf and continue to sell. We don't waste food anymore. If it turns out that it was actually a problem, I just say, get rid of it, destroy it. And they confirm again that they acknowledged that advice and they did accordingly and they confirmed they destroyed it. So there are three things that are important to understand. First, blockchain helps us to distribute, to share information and it allow us to analyze it along the supply chain, for example. Second, we can in real time interact and exchange. And third, and this is now the real beauty with that, as this is blockchain and all this cannot be deleted or changed anymore, this is compliance by design. If something really then happens at the end, you could, you could just say, look at the blockchain. I did everything. I acknowledged, I took it off, I confirmed everything accordingly. It is there in the system. So that's a really cool example where you see how the technology by sharing data helps us to simplify processes massively and not being forced to connect all the systems peer to peer. We do further cases in the area of international trade. I mean, this is even more complex. Now we're going across companies, we have authorities, we have customer authorities, brokers, banks. The big hope we can get rid of a few of those, but <laughs> let's see. Uh, we are in that area. Uh, one case I really like, um, going a little bit away from the supply chain, is payment fraud prevention. The reason why I like it, because it's so simple. So the problem is the companies send a lot of money to wrong accounts. There are many reasons. Social engineering, fake invoices, whatever. They're Believe it or not, but it happens, money is sent out to wrong accounts. The problem is, how can I solve that? And it's quite easy. 
What we came up with the company is, is okay, what is if everyone shares the account data that I have, so my account data through blockchain? This is it. No more. I don't have the need anymore to do that for all my partners. No, I just do mine. Put it to the blockchain, that's it. Now my payment run checks before I send the money, is that an account verified by blockchain? If yes, good to go. If no, I reject it. Or at least I have some further processes. And this is it, and it works. That easy, and you see by sharing data, it simplifies things. One thing that is also very important, talking about multi-party collaboration, talking about business networks, um, we're talking usually not about just one perspective. We're talking about different perspectives. And we need to get all of them in the network. So we have manufacturers, they have a different benefit than a wholesaler, for example, in the example I had before. And for me, it became clear that we need, that this is not one party that can do that alone. So we need partners for that, to get it end to end done, to get all perspective done. And a few examples I would like to mention today, uh, you can see here. So one is, um, together with Deutsche Telekom and Camelot, we did a, a POC in the area of uh, tracking stolen or lost devices. So you put them to the blockchain and you can identify if you can use it or not. But what I really also like from a technical perspective, what we did, we spread, uh, we spent the network up across two infrastructures. So we had blockchain nodes sitting in the SAP cloud and we had blockchain nodes sitting in the Deutsche Telekom cloud. And this is a very important topic for me again. Everyone in the network has to have the choice to decide where the, um, where its digital copy actually is. Another example, as we have talked about food, food provenance, I mean, you can apply this to almost every industry, whether this is food, pharmaceutical products, spare parts in automotive, or in highly regulated industries such as aerospace, where you need to track and prove every single step you do, where you have to prove where did you got, uh, buy the steel you're using from. And another startup um, working on SAP Cloud Platform blockchain, uh, Blocknets, is in this area and uh, developing a solution. With Vipo, for example, we do green energy tracking and distribution. Um, and um, Modem, for example, helps Swiss Post to implement the cold chain, ensuring that if they ship medication, that this stays within a temperature range. Just a few examples where we work with partners together and try to provide an end to end. I have one more case, and therefore I have a video that I would like to roll momentarily, and I hope the sound is working. ...and efficient yeah. transportation of goods within Europe and globally. With more than 450 million units in circulation, it is a cheap, standardized, and exchangeable asset that has been widely adopted by manufacturers, logistics companies, distributors, and retailers alike. A blockchain-based pilot developed by GS1, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and SAP, together with more than 30 retail and logistics companies on the SAP Cloud Platform, enables industry participants to record and exchange pallet receipt notes in a peer-to-peer -peer environment without the need for a centralized intermediary. Truck drivers simply enter the amount of exchanged pallets in a mobile application and sign digitally with their private key. For easy interaction with the logistics peers in the exchange process, a QR code helps identify the individual request. The logistics employee now simply scans the QR code and can either amend or accept the request. Members of the back office have instant visibility on the balance with their business peers. As this exchange process is now signed by both participating parties and stored on blockchain, we remove reliance on the current paper-based process to record deviations for future settlement. This helps remove inefficiencies and creates an immutable shared digital truth. By using standardized data formats such as GS1 EPCIS and a very lightweight technical approach, we were able to onboard companies of any size, large corporations, small and mid-size enterprises, as well as sole traders to build a scalable, sustainable network that minimizes friction among trading partners. This is the power of enterprise blockchain. Okay, what was really, really exciting about this case is we started the discussions with more than 20 companies. So we had large companies, mid-sized companies. We had even small shops that have 10 or 15 employees only. But this was exactly the challenge because also they had to deal with the pallets. And if they would break the chain, the whole thing would be in risk. So one 
proof point that you need to start early. But then go into technology as we attack it, right? So a discussion came up about, okay, what is this network thing? Do I need a node? Why do I need a node? Uh, okay, if I need a node, where is it? SAP, do you host it? Do I have to host it? Do I need a special requirement, uh, requirement for my hardware? Whatever is that discussion. At the end, it turned out that more than 50% decided to pr uh, provision an own node. They went to GitHub, downloaded it, implemented it. And at the end, being able to have a digital copy on their own. And we see that in many projects. When, we, when I discuss them with them, I mean, is that what you want to do? They say, I don't know. I really don't know, but what I know is that I want to have the possibility of doing that. I want to have the choice, as I said before, that I'm in charge of where I do this, where my node sits. So this is one of the paradigms that we at SAP which is very important to us, which is openness and give you, the customers, the choice of where your digital copy is. We started, how, how do we enable you to, to get started, to get your own node? So in summer, we have introduced SAP Cloud Platform blockchain services uh, with two protocols, Hyperledger Fabric and Multichain, and this week we have announced Quorum as well. So this is what we call the foundational services. So with a few clicks, we enable you to get up your own node, to connect it into a network, and to participate into one. Then what you can see, we have a layered approach. There is the blockchain services on top of that. This is a layer where we have real services, where we have services that helps you very quickly to leverage blockchain capabilities without thinking about how this needs to be implemented for each of the protocols. So at the end of the day, you wanted to do identity management. You want to map your users, your roles, and your profiles that you're used to uh, be in your system just to a wallet, to a private and public key. You want to use some real services, like the traceability service that I've talked before about the food case. There's just a service you can use, and it does it for you. And this is where, from our perspective, the value is. Because at the end, when you build applications, so-called blockchain applications, it's still 80, 90% a regular application. So we, are, we want to abstract the technology, the blockchain technology, and provide you blockchain services that then on top enables you, but also us and our own development forces, to quickly build the solutions that you need to build to fulfill or to solve the problem space by using techno uh, technologies such as blockchain. And one more thing that is very important to me to mention is integration services. As I said before, you have current processes, you have system. This is your backbone. This is the backbone of every company. And this is the backbone of the economy. We cannot just ignore that. So we have from the very beginning to think about how do we integrate distributed, applications, distributed processes into your current processes? Or how, how do you even evolve them into that stage? And this is why it's also very important from our perspective to help you to integrate that into your existing landscape and also for us to understand how we do have to involve our standard products by doing so. Talking about openness and talking about to giving you the free choice of where the node is, we are also announced this week one more plan that I call the bring your own network possibility. So on the left side here, you see um, what is possible today. So you deploy, for example, Fabric nodes within an SAP infrastructure. And then, like in the example of the Deutsche Telekom and Camelot, we had one of the instances outside. So in this case, Deutsche Telekom Cloud. That will lead, from my perspective, as the network will grow and as you decide which infrastructure you want to use for that, into a picture that is more like that, and I call a multi-cloud. There are, there are nodes sitting in SAP Cloud, and I'm more than happy to help you with that to get them there. But I also respect that there are nodes in other clouds, and we, and that's also our responsibility from SAP, need to ensure that interoperability is done, that this works. And then there's a third one that is very important, talking about technology and believing that technology follows the problem. We need also to respect that there might be technologies blockchain technologies out that we do not have yet in our portfolio. But still, 
you might be forced or you want to join those networks. And this is why we have introduced this week the bring your own network plan that allows you to connect these nodes into the SAP uh, cloud platform, still leveraging the upper layers, still leveraging our blockchain services, still leveraging the integration services, like SAP HANA. So we are able, or you will be able, to use SQL using a virtual table that is then connected to the blockchain to select data and even write it back to the blockchain. And with that plan, we enable you to do that even for protocols, so blockchain technology that we do not provision in the SAP environment. With that, I'm at the end of my presentation. To summarize, we have a technology that inspires a lot. There's a huge we can uh, achieve. On the other side, we have a system landscape. We have business process as we are. If we are smart and we're getting both worlds together, we will end up in a completely new, and I don't want to say new world, but we will see new business models and a new way how business is done, which is way more effective and uh, way uh, more optimized than ever before. With that, I'm at the end of my presentation. If you need more information, um, go to the booth or just on sap.com slash, blo uh, slash blockchain. You will find all the information from the consortium, from the technical, what we provide, anything is there. With that, thank you so much for being here. Take care. Bye.